Hi, I'm Chris from Air Windows, and I have a much awaited plugin for people today. This is called Path Nutty, and what Path Nutty is, is a Chebyshev filter. And what a Chebyshev filter is, is essentially a way of just enhancing certain harmonics and not others. As you can see on the screen, we've got second, third, fourth, etc., etc., all the way to 13th harmonic and an invert depth control. If you used Path Nutty before, you should uh, be cautious with this because I have it arranged differently. The fourth and eighth harmonics and the fifth and ninth harmonics are flipped in polarity because I figured out a thing to do with them. But here, let's start showing you what this is about. And rather than immediately play music, I can show you better with the test tone. So, boop, there's the test tone. Here's what Paffinetti does. You can see this is a very, very high resolution graph. It goes all the way down to minus 174 dB. And that is basically just the sheer 32-bit uh, information there. I turn on Paffinetti and nothing happens because it's an Airwindows plugin and it doesn't do anything if you're not using it. And we'll turn up third harmonic. That is a kind of distortion. Here we'll lower frequency. And you'll see that the amount of added dither noise in here is very little. It's still very quiet. But you'll also see that the amount of... Hmm, maybe I want to turn this down so it doesn't hurt your ears. We've got a nice sharp harmonic here. And the distinction between this and like just running saturation effects is saturation effects even stuff that's really gentle like my spiral and density um, do more than one harmonic. Well, Path Nutty and Chevyshev filters are special in that they really only do the one harmonic that they're bringing in. And what that does is it stops aliasing until the harmonic literally bounces off the top frequency. And I'll show you that now. It will make a high frequency noise, so forgive that. So you bounce it off the top frequency, and that's aliasing. We do seem to have a couple of little overtones in there. They're not very loud, but that one harmonic is still very clearly defined. We got a little stuff way the hell down here, and it's actually quite easy to hear, even though it says it's 150 dB down, but I don't know, can't you hear it? I can hear it. Signs are very revealing. You can hear lots of stuff through them. Now let's go down to a mellow sound so that we can uh, show some of these other ones without just hurting your brain with ice pick harmonics. And here's what happens if you do, say, a fifth harmonic. See, that is a different frequency than... So the way these are arranged is that I start bringing out additional partials as I go. Like, for instance, I can do a seventh. You can see it there. It is acting a little funny, but this is uh, this is what the algorithm has given me. I've got additional boosts here, and then it seems every other one, it starts bringing out something new. But you'll notice that I'm getting a more and more square wavy like sound out of this. And it's relatively uh, 
unaffected by the volume. It's generating these as a mathematical equation rather than a, a factor of how loud it is. So as we will we'll drop this to a super bass note so that uh, and then turn it up more. And you'll notice that we're seeing these and it's being measured in this way, but this is not really an algorithm that does a huge sharp change having to do with amplitude. You do need to get up to amplitude in order to do it properly, and maybe that's what was throwing off my calculations here. What I'm going to do is take these all down nice and low, and then I'm running bit shift gain so that it's not obnoxious to listen to, and we're going to have to 10 bits down. I bet you can't hear this until I turn it up to, say, 0 dB. Now I've got tiny little amounts of harmonics until I zero them all out like that. And it, it does actually, it is actually sensitive to the harmonics that you're using. And we can just barely hear it. So if I put on a third harmonic at full crank, we get a lovely clear uh, harmonic coming out at exactly the right frequency. I do have these turned down as they continue to go, however. And there we have a fifth harmonic. and a seventh harmonic. See, now this is working. The reason it wasn't working for me exactly the way I expected before was because I was at less than zero dB. The Chevy-Chev equation will take sine waves and turn it to these harmonics. If, that is, it's running at a uh, full crank, because it is a mathematical equation. There's another harmonic. In the twelfth harmonic, is an even harmonic. So yeah, we can almost play a little uh, tune with these. Or indeed make a chord. There you have it. And the interesting thing about that is notice that we're not generating any other harmonics up here. That's the thing about a Chebyshev filter that makes it interesting. So we can take this raunchy little noise and take it all the way up to about 1.4K without aliasing. And then if we go beyond it, we get insane crazy aliasing, because mathematically it has to, but if we're not, the way this works and the way it's arranged, and again, this is arranged slightly differently from the original Paffinetti. The original Paffinetti had some of these reversed in amplitude, so you'd have to do third one and fifth minus one to get this. But this one and I can take all those out. It almost sounds like some sort of organ. Another thing we can do is add odd harmonics. And this gives us a square wavy kind of effect. but it's a sharply band-limited square wavy kind of effect where the harmonics, again, using this many harmonics, I can go up to, let's see, 17K with all the harmonics engaged, and it will still give me zero aliasing. It's zero aliasing until it actually hits that point. Now, 
I bet you're wondering, what does that sound like on music, since I haven't demonstrated it on any music whatsoever? I'll grab bit shift gain and make that go back. We'll do a minus one. And I'll go and zero these things out. This is a uh, logic thing where you can tab to those little fields. Logic does give you those fields in, in uh, generic interface and hit zero to zero them out. Anybody who doesn't do that, like maybe Reaper or whatever, you should learn to do that. Uh, the DAW has to supply that. So if I play music, people always like me to turn the music down a lot. So let me see whether I can address that. We'll go three bits down. Now notice this, I'm not clipping, and I'm at this level. If I start introducing harmonics, here's what we get. It's getting louder, and it has something of a more distorted tone to it. If I bring in second harmonics, it's a kind of funny warming effect. And second harmonics will give me a peak, as you can see. So we'll put that back to zero. But the interesting thing about full-on odd harmonics this now sounds incredibly distorted and square wavy but it's still not quite clipping that's what a Chebyshev calculation will do if you handle all of the numbers right it's going to be super distort as you can hear a lot of it isn't, like, everything below about 1.3k is not aliasing. It's a sort of grindy noise. And check this out. Invert depth lets you minimize the effect or subtract it, which gets weird. And we'll go through and take everything up at the third harmonic and get a kind of weird effect. And let's add reversed fifth harmonic just because. Notice how you could do really strange things with Chebyshev harmonics. That's so weird, I'm going to see what I can do with the fourth harmonic. So a Chevyshev filter is a strange thing. You might not call it properly an EQ or anything like that. It's really its own thing. This has been a favorite of my plugins for people for some time, and I'm happy to be able to bring it back out. As you can see, you, sometimes you'll get peaks over things that are kind of loud. And also you'll see that you can construct these weird effects and then apply a tiny amount of them if you want, rather than this. So we got that and bypassed, we've got this. So you can shape a simple sound like the kick drum in here to make it do interesting things. Or with this, I'm boosting. And I'm boosting in a way that is actually giving me overs and bit shift gain is turning it back down afterwards. But if this is a kind of boost that sounds good to me, and it was all happening out of that fourth harmonic, I can pull it back until this is just bringing me up to 
my peak, so I'm using it almost like a uh, level gain, but it's a level gain that gives me this tone color. And taking it back out again, and we'll try to go for warmth, like. The second harmonic is throwing, I think, probably a bunch of low frequency behavior out of it, but when we're just exaggerating it harshly this way, then I do think that I see sort of DC offset going on out of there, but just for laughs, then we probably want to, we might want to follow this to the filter. But supposing we're doing that, through adding all those low harmonics, the even harmonics, my kick drum there is now acting totally different. It's got a whole sound to it. And I can take out these higher harmonics, let's go for just the top, let's do a gradiated degree where it's mostly second and then it continues to bring the other ones in, but it's more smoothly. And what does that give us? It was very clean. And then we have a sort of saturation effect that is even harmonics rather than not harmonics. And we can apply it in inverse. Effectively, what that'll be doing is if you have a waveform and it's squinching the waveform upwards, doing an invert will squinch the waveform downwards. It depends upon what sounds better for your waveform. And that's doing interesting stuff. So while we're at it, let's add some straight up distortion to this. Odd harmonics. And we'll make it higher frequencies. Oh, except for I forgot, I'm applying this inverted. So what I'd be wanting to do to add distortion in the inverted setup is to subtract it. Check this out. And it's turned down quite a lot, so... Starting to get louder. And let's say there's a mid-range equality maybe we're finding here, so... Let's give it a sort of smiley curve effect. And the overall level is a bit too strong. Push that harder, and that. And that sounds kind of grungy. This is maybe not exactly what I want. So let's pull back some of these higher harmonics a little bit. And we're comparing this to this. We'll pull it right back. And then if we like the way it was behaving, add just a little bit of it and we've invented our own weird distortion function that's tuned to this track 
in order to bring it up in this particular way with very few harmonics on lower frequencies and a lot of weird stuff going on in the second harmonic and the even harmonics. Maybe there's too much of that, so what we should do is zero some of these guys out. We'll pull fourth harmonic way back and because maybe we're not liking what this, the even harmonics are doing. And that was the end of that track, so I'll start it over. And then we keep turning it up until it's doing obvious clipping. So this is now our super distort for this particular track. And probably too much in the way a second harmonic. And again, if we were applying this, I designed this inverted because I started applying the second harmonic inverted. Positive, it's this. Interesting, huh? So this is a tool for finding unusual behaviors. And it may be a little unpredictable, but the basic principles follow. And the basic principles are that we're generating See, that is a, a funny sort of combination of harmonics that are applied to literally everything in the track. Yeah, that's distorting. That's distorting Spanish, not distorting the output. And when we design these funny things, they end up doing you know this this weirdness and then you can dial it right back so that it's inverted or regular and you're designing your own weird combination of harmonics for the purpose of applying it to the music or just doing crazy stuff. You'll have to learn how to listen for things like third and or odd and even harmonics and how to apply them. And you'll probably be deciding whether to go inverted or regular. But yeah. This is the first plugin after the big release of all the Dither to 32 bit float plugins. So it also is, as you can plainly see, dithering to 30 bit float. That's a 150 dB down or so. Strangely, the test tone is also producing the same result. Probably has something to do with the anti aliasing as a sine wave. Um, it automatically does anti-aliasing. But yeah, this is the latest Air Windows tool, and this is one that's been uh, waited for for some time. People really liked PathNutty, because people like playing with Chebyshev filters, and PathNutty gives you lots of harmonics to play with. You can really throw all kinds of crazy combinations of things on there. And... Uh, I hope you like it. It's this week's plugin. And this is all supported by my Patreon. So that is how I make my living and keep doing this kind of stuff. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been around to do the huge work fest of uh, last week. And so, or to continue releasing things like Path Nutty and so on. And I really appreciate it that people let me do this. That's not a given. It's not necessarily a given that I'm going to be able to keep going with all this kind of stuff. But with the Patreon working, and it's about as uh, 
people get all fussy about things, but you know what gets kicked off of like Visa and MasterCard and PayPal? It is like, yeah, don't be looking to capitalist money institutions for fairness and decency. <laughs> but do be looking to this particular one for being able to keep me working on this stuff because it's been working out pretty well for me and there's no reason to expect that that's going to change anytime soon. That hopefully is a positive note for at least most people or at least people who like me doing this kind of work. That said, Path Nutty is free and open source and uh, you can simply use it and see whether you like it. The whole idea with the Patreon was if you're using my plugins and find them absolutely indispensable so that you would have paid $50 for a perpetual license that also gives you the source code and access to the dev, yeah, so maybe it's a bit of a bargain. Then jump on the Patreon for $50 per month per each plugin that you consider to be that super important and the ones that you don't consider to be that super important use them anyway but i'm just saying you know if i'm supposed to keep doing this work then that's a way to think about it that lets you come up with a metric and it's not just like give chris all your money i haven't been asking anybody for that but if you want to pretend that there's still 50 bucks a pop that actually works out pretty well for me you know, it doesn't have to go even quite that far. You can just pick your very favoritest of the favorites. And uh, hopefully I'll keep on coming up with new ones each year. And there will be new ones added. And so it'll all kind of make sense. I like it when things all kind of make sense. Path Nutty is weird and complicated, and maybe it doesn't make all that much sense, but it sure is fun to play with. And I hope you like it. Thanks.